So question three is our hodgepodge question, and we're just asking uh, to identify uh, certain properties or in molecules. Uh, the first one was to identify the uh, largest homo-lumo gap and the smallest. And if you'll remember, the larger the conjugation, the smaller the homo-lumo gap becomes. So the largest homo-lumo gap is simply hydrogen because there is no pi system it's only a sigma system and our homo lumo gap is the sigma to sigma star or the bonding to antibonding orbital our smallest homo lumo gap is for the most extended conjugated pi system it is this one here The second one is acidity. Which one is the most acidic? Our eyes, typically, because we focused on this, are drawn to this 1,3-dicarbonyl species because we talk about the one in between as being particularly acidic. But we have to be a little careful here because if we notice in this molecule, we have a carboxylic functionality. And this is going to be much more acidic proton. pKa of this proton right here is typically somewhere around f between 4 and 5. Uh, these are going to be somewhere around 10. Uh, this one is more acidic than most alcohols because of the electron withdrawing nature of the fluorines, but it is just an alcohol. And in this case, it's actually a uh, enol, so it's just kind of a substituted ketone. Here we have no activated protons at all. The most acidic would probably be these ones on the sp to hybridize carbon, but they're not particularly acidic. So our most acidic proton is going to be the one which is on the carbox oxygen of the carboxylic acid. And our least acidic compound is going to be this one, which is simply a carbo, uh, I'm sorry, a hydrocarbon. The next question is asking us about aromaticity, uh, and we just have to label each of these as aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic. And if we look at uh, this one, the seven-membered ring, it is conjugated with three double bonds. Uh, it has six pi electrons. The problem is it's not, they're not all sp2 or sp hybridized that is there's not a cyclic array of p orbitals because this carbon is sp3 hybridized so this one is actually non aromatic and let's make that just a little bit smaller there we go the next one we have to look at is the cyclopentadienyl anion. Uh, all of the carbons are sp2 hybridized. That means that there's p orbitals in which electrons can communicate. It's We will assume it's planar because it's all sp2 hybridized orbitals. It has the opportunity to be planar. And it has two electrons in this pi bond, two electrons in this pi bond, and two electrons in this p orbital uh, that's left over from the hybridization of this atom. So uh, it does fit uh, all the criteria for aromaticity. It has 4n plus 2 electrons. So it is aromatic. Oops. This one over here, uh, we are not used to seeing these, but all of the carbon atoms uh, have a p orbital left over. They're all sp2 hybridized, so they have an opportunity uh, that's completely conjugated cyclic system. And we have two electrons in each of those uh, pi bonds, if we were to think of them as individual pi bonds. And we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have 10 electrons. That is 4 plus 2, so that also is aromatic. And the last one we want to look at uh, 
is the cyclo cyclobutadienyl system. We will assume it's planar uh, because all of the carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized. It could be planar. If it were, we would count the electrons, and we have two from each of the pi bonds. Uh, so we have two four electrons in here. Obviously, we have four n electrons. So it is anti aromatic. Now let's look at the next criteria here down in these series of molecules, and it's nucleophilicity. Which one of these is the best nucleophile? So hopefully at this point, our eye should be drawn to the thing with the negative charge. Uh, nucleophiles like to uh, find electrophiles. They like to attack with a pair of electrons. Negatively charged nucleophiles uh, tend to be more nucleophilic than neutral. Uh, particularly of the same kind. So if we compare directly this as a nucleophile with this as a nucleophile, we know alcohols can act as nucleophiles. We see that they uh, uh, have lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen, so they they uh, tend to be nucleophilic, and under the right conditions they can act as nucleophiles. But an anion is going to be a much better nucleophile uh, than a neutral compound of the same structure. And our other choice of nucleophiles are these aromatic systems, in which case we have an aromatic uh, electrons in an aromatic system are going to attack. When they attack, they disrupt the aromaticity of the system, so they're not particularly good nucleophiles. Any aromatic system is not a particularly good nucleophile. Uh, so we should select then our negatively charged compound as the best nucleophile. Uh, and now we have to compare these three. Uh, we can use this as a nucleophile without disrupting any aromaticity. We're used to seeing them. They are pretty decent nucleophiles. Uh, here we have to disrupt the aromatic system in here. So we can safely assume it must be one of the choices of the aromatic system as the weakest nucleophile. Here we have an electron donating group, uh, and it it's donates through resonance. Lone pair of electrons on that oxygen can uh, delocalize into the ring. So this thing is uh, a decent nucleophile as far as aromatic systems are going. Go. Uh, this one has an electron withdrawing group. It does have a pair of electrons that can donate, uh, but inductively chlorine is quite electronegative. So this is our uh, worst nucleophile. And finally, electrophilicity. And again, here uh, we can take a look at our notes, and we actually have ranked the carbonyl compounds as electrophiles. Uh, again, we see that we have one charged species, and it's negatively charged. So negatively charged species don't tend to be very good electrophiles because, remember, they, they're an electrophile uh, is looking to have electrons added to it. Uh, and in this case, we have a negative charge, so there's going to be a repulsion. So we should be thinking right away that that should be a good candidate. If we look at the others, they're all neutral. They have carbonyl groups, which we know to be electrophilic. And they have different substituents. This has a, a carbonyl as well, but it obviously has the best electron donating group because it has a full negative charge. So that's our worst electrophile, that negatively charged thing. The others are all nu neutral. So we'll select it as this worst. What then is our best electrophile? Well, all we have to do is take a look at the carbonyl group and take a look at the electron withdrawing donating properties of the group attached directly to it. Uh, so nitrogen is electron donating relative to hydrogen and also relative to carbon. Uh, because it has a lone pair of electrons that we can directly contribute through resonance and uh, promote uh, another pair of electrons up onto the oxygen uh, and we get a resonance structure. With the ketone and the aldehyde, that's not the case. We do know that 
alkyl groups are slightly electron donating relative to hydrogen so that should stabilize that electrophilic center it's not going to be as electrophilic as this the other reason this is a better electrophile is that we have this very small hydrogen attached directly to the electrophilic carbon the carbon of the carbonyl group as opposed to a methyl group which is significantly larger uh, so it's sterically hindered uh, so our best electrophile Oops, let's, uh, our best electrophile is the aldehyde. And there we have it.